Um, well, the, the invasion of Canada was basically a two-pronged attack. Uh, there was one force that was aimed at capturing Montreal, and that was under the command of General Montgomery. There was a second arm that was aimed at capturing Quebec City under Benedict Arnold. So just to discuss uh, Montgomery's expedition first, I believe they left in late August. Uh, they left from Fort Ticonderoga and went up Lake Champlain and up the Richelieu River. Um, so it was a pretty well-traveled route. Not easy by any stretch of the imagination, but, but fairly well-traveled. Um, Montgomery and his men achieved quite a lot of success. They captured a couple of forts along the Richelieu River, uh, Fort Chamblay and Fort St. John's. And then they proceeded to Montreal. And they didn't really encounter that much resistance. Um, the fort at St. John's really didn't come out uh, to fight. I think it was only 36 hours and, and they capitulated. Uh, Montreal, uh, Sir Guy Carleton, the British commander, he left before the Americans arrived. Right? He wasn't confident at all about being able to defend Montreal. There weren't many British soldiers in the province. Um, so he decided Quebec was better fortified, he would leave, go to Quebec, and wait, wait it out there. Um, and he dressed himself as a habitant and uh, escaped. Most of his men were captured. So Montgomery's expedition was quite successful. So the second prong of the attack, if we want to think about it that way, was led by General Arnold. And he had about 1,100 men. They left from Cambridge, Massachusetts in mid-September. So it would have been very easy if they'd been able to sail up the coast and down the St. Lawrence River to Quebec City, but the Royal Navy was very powerful and, of course, wouldn't allow that to happen. So they were forced then to go inland and upriver. So they dragged, these 1,100 men, dragged their heavy bateaus, these boats full of equipment and supplies, against the current up the Kennebec River. They also had to make numerous portages. They had to drag these boats through the swamps, hack their way through the bush, they ran out of food. It took them much longer than they thought. And this was, a, this was an experienced, uh, if passionate army, but very inexperienced. So they ran out of food. Um, they ended up eating their shoes, their clothes, their hair grease, their, a dog. Um, a, at the end, they were eating a mixture of flour and paste. Uh, so obviously they were malnourished. Um, they were suffering from exposure. It was a terrible winter very cold, and of course they were losing some of their clothes and their shoes um, because they were starving. So they lost a number, a significant number of men en route. So they started out with 1,100 men. By the time they reached Quebec, they only had 600. Um, so this was you know, significant loss. Um, and this impacted their ability to lay siege to Quebec City. Uh, by the time they arrived with the men sick, tired, a number of them, 300 had deserted, um, some had Quite a few had died en route from disease, starvation, um, exposure. So they were weak, they were tired, they didn't have much ammunition, uh, they had very little in the way of artillery, so they could not lay siege to what was a heavily um, fortified city. So the decision was made then to withdraw from Quebec City about 25 miles distant and wait then for reinforcements from General Montgomery, who had successfully taken Montreal and was going to head with reinforcements um, and shore up the team, so to speak, before they tried attacking the city. When it came to the actual Battle of Quebec, this happened in late December, December 31st to be precise. By that point, uh, General Montgomery had traveled from, Mon from Montreal to Quebec City, um, bringing 300 men. So this was a, quite a small force. Uh, Arnold, who'd been waiting there for him, had about 600 men who were still you know, short of provisions, quite cold, um, very little ammunition and artillery. Uh, Montgomery brought some more artillery. Um, he also brought some captured regimental clothing from the British. So there was something warm for, the, uh, for Arnold's men to put on. Um, and they ended up waiting about 25 miles distant from Quebec City for an opportune time to attack. One of the problems was they couldn't really lay a long siege to Quebec City. Uh, they didn't have heavy artillery, which, means, which meant they couldn't bombard the city. Uh, the British, on the other hand, had some big guns, and they proceeded to blast away any artillery that the Americans could bring to the battle. 
So they decided to wait until the weather conditions provided them some cover, which it did in, uh, on the 31st of December. There was a heavy snowstorm, really terrible conditions. You wouldn't want to be outside in conditions like that, and they're taking this, going to take us fortified city by storm. So with 900 men, they decided again to split up their forces. So again, a two-pronged attack. Um, Montgomery decided to head south of the city with 300 men. Arnold decided to head north of the city with 600 men. They would meet. Um, they encountered heavy resistance from the British defenders, and it wasn't really a fair battle in many ways. Uh, Montgomery led a charge against a blockhouse, and he was killed almost instantly by defender fire. Um, a number of his men were killed as well, and Montgomery's force withdrew. Arnold had a bit more success. He too was raked by uh, defender gunfire. Um, they did manage to enter part of the city, but were, then were repulsed by some really fierce resistance from Highlander loyalists, a detachment of Highlander loyalists. Um, there was a chance that they might actually have been successful if they had pushed hard, but the revolutionaries had lost their two main commanders. Montgomery had been killed. Arnold had been wound, seriously wounded in his leg. So they, were, they didn't have strong leadership, and there was some debate about what they could, what they could really do um, in terms of attacking a strong British defensive position. And one of the other problems was that the storm was good cover for perhaps uh, giving them a bit of cover from, from British observance. But snow and cold are not uh, great conditions for attackers. Um, they found it very hard to fire their weapons. Um, they were wet. Uh, they were extremely cold. There was one report that uh, the soldiers had very difficulty even firing their guns because they were so cold. They just couldn't feel their fingers anymore. So the, uh, the majority of Arnold's force then ended up surrendering to the British. I think about 400, a little over 400 men. And that was the end, really, of the Battle of Quebec.